I, I just can't keep this in any longer, okay? I've come upon something very, very disturbing. The mainstream press is officially coming for the slow amongst us. That's right. Sloths! I'm here to protect the, the good name of sloths. Our three toad friends in the trees. I know what you're thinking. A video about sloths? That, that's really what you're doing? Yes. And I'll tell you how I got there. Well, you see, it's come to my attention that 60 Minutes has uh, performed a hit piece on Sloths the Animal for some reason, as you can see by the title of their video here. How Sloths Survive, Thrive as Nature's Couch Potato. Now that's not very nice, is it? How'd you feel if 60 Minutes made a piece on you, called you Nature's Couch Potato? Why so slow? Why do they move so slow? Are they cute or are they so ugly they're cute? Oh no, they're cute. You like a beadless animal. Yeah. I won't stand for this, okay? And uh, they posted this on Christmas, no less. Do they have no souls? Probably not, but I think I think we knew that already. All right, moving on. Sloths are some of the best guys. You got Sid from Ice Age, uh, Sloth from the Goonies, one of the seven deadly sins, okay? Remember, in the back of your head, that's what we're here to protect. Look, just to remind you what a sloth is, okay? Just to remind you what you're fighting for. You're defending the honor of the sluggish tree dwellers of Central and South, okay. Even Google's going in on them. Will no one come to bat for my boy the sloth? That's why I'm here, okay? But you know what's just as bad as slandering innocent arboreal animals? Leaving your privacy unprotected. And that's where NordVPN comes in with top tier security that's just a click away. Imagine the internet as a jungle, a place where data pythons lurk around every branch. NordVPN steps in as your cyber machete, hacking away at all those no good data thieves living in the brush. But NordVPN isn't just about avoiding digital deforesters. It's packed with more features than a Swiss army knife. Malware getting you down? Zap it away with NordVPN's threat protection. Annoying ads popping up? NordVPN makes them disappear faster than a brush fire. Okay, we got the shot. Go, go, go! Craving your favorite shows while globe trotting? Use NordVPN to bring a slice of home straight to your screen, wherever you might be. And for those moments where your passwords slip your mind, NordVPN's got NordPass, your trusty sidekick, keeping all your passwords secure and ready. NordPass can be purchased together with NordVPN with the same discount, no less. So why not give your digital life the upgrade it deserves? Head over to nordvpn.com slash jontron for an exclusive NordVPN deal. And with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, giving it a test run couldn't be easier. Also, as an added bonus, the people who buy the two-year plan will get an extra four months for free. So click that link, team up with NordVPN, help support this show, and wrap your online antics in a warm emergency thermal blanket. Ah, toasty and secure. Right, let's trek back home. All right, let's get back on track. Let's see what 60 Minutes has to say about our tropical friends, shall we? The stopwatch has long been the symbol of 60 Minutes, but any measure of time is pointless for the subject of our next story, the slow-moving sloth. First of all, just like, why so serious about sloths of all things? Like, the vibe is off right away. You might think these distant relatives of the armadillo would make the perfect meal for just about anything faster. Wait a minute, sloths are related to armadillos? I, I legitimately did not know that. But hold on, why would you assume any relative of an armadillo would be tasty? I mean, the armadillo doesn't look tasty at all. It, it's like the opposite of tasty. It's got armor. Mm, what the fuck? Don't put that in. What's, I don't know why that comes up when you, when you type armadillo. And yet somehow, sloths have been hanging on in one form or another for 64 million years. What I can't stand is that any amount of these have survived to this date. I'm, I'm spreading awareness because I'm sick of these fuckers just sitting up there. Do you, that's attitude. He's got attitude. Am I reading that wrong? That's attitude, I think. To understand this quirky animal, 60 Minutes hung out with a quirky zoologist. Okay, so not only are you gonna insult the defenseless animal, but you're also gonna just straight up insult the expert that you brought onto your program as well? Is no one safe? You're just gonna call her quirky? Scientists are making new discoveries about a creature that's turned survival of the fittest upside down. But if it's, if it's lived for that long, obviously it's fit in some way. So, unless you're just saying because they, they live upside down, that still wouldn't turn the concept upside down. So here's where we meet Lucy Cook, the aforementioned quirky zoologist. Uh, their words, not mine. And she's joined by 60 Minutes on the ground reporter, Sharon Alfonsi. This is an area where there are lots of sloths, so that we have that on our side. Perfect. Great start. That's how you know she's a professional. The first thing we learned about sloths is that it's hard to spot them in the wild. Lucy Cook scanned the treetops. 
The sloth is a master of disguise. Like not two minutes ago, you're saying it's a useless piece of shit. And now you're like, oh, a perfectly camouflaged miracle of nature. Get your story straight, 60 Minutes. If I were a sloth, I would very slowly contact a lawyer. Oh, there's one up there. She's hunched over. So what we're looking at is her back. That is not the side of the sloth we went all the way to Central America to see. Listen, a little pro tip here. Just go 180 around that sucker. You'll get the whole view you were looking for. Costa Rica trip salvaged. Their eyesight is lousy. Their hearing not much better. In the tree, they... I feel like maybe could you could you have gotten a more flattering shot for us here? This guy looks like he just woke up from being unconscious in the trenches of World War One for Christ's sakes. Being nature's couch potato is the reason sloths have survived for more than 60 million years in spite of, well, themselves. This thing is basically dog shit. And the fact that it's alive is I might as well film it to show you how dog shit it is. I wouldn't have left this alive if I saw it. In a tree, they can move like a Tai Chi master. But on the ground, Cook says gravity removes any shred of dignity. My man is clearly over here just trying to get a 4 a.m. bag of Doritos. Don't tell me you haven't been there. Sharon's just over here like, just go. Just do the thing you're supposed to do. Oh, you're pissing me off. The conquistadors that first observed them, they said terrible things. One said it was the stupidest animal that he'd ever seen, and another said one more defect would have make its life impossible, and they just, they just didn't understand them, you know. Uh, ¿Qué es esto? Uh, esto no es oro. ¿Qué sentido tiene? Uh, ni siquiera puede resistir mi espada. Qué inútil. Cook says what those early explorers didn't understand was English, but that's irrelevant. And what is frankly hard to believe when you watch the effort it takes for a sloth just to blink is that this hairy ninja is uniquely built to survive. Once again, you're just pointing out that it's a perfectly adapted animal and your whole thesis thus far is wrong? Why so slow? Why do they move so slow? Well, you just said because they that's the way they do it. You appear to be the slow one. There's, you're definitely amongst the slow in my final analysis here. Sloths typically only climb to the ground for bathroom breaks. With habits like that and nails like this, you can understand what what? What are you what are you going to glean from that? With fingers like this and going to the floor to shit, we we can really glean that <laughs> you can understand why they are solitary creatures. Yeah, cuz they keep getting bullied by people like you. They've got some emotional scars, okay? You've turned them introverted and prefer to be alone until they don't. What more? <laughs> True. Uh, you know what else that actually applies to? Hard-hitting journalism. The females will climb to the top of a tree when they're in heat and scream for sex. <laughs> but they scream in D sharp. Why do you know that? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. And I, he may well, on the strength of my impersonation. So he might just, <laughs> they seem slow until they want it. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I will not have you speak to me that way. This lady's gone through her paces, okay? That's something you can't get out of a textbook. That's learned in the heat of battle. <laughs> I love the lady still smiling, but she's still like, you can stop now. <laughs> I, 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 got, I got it, I, I got the idea. Behind Lucy Cook's cheeky sense of humor is a hefty resume. <laughs> Why does she look like she's preparing it for like a stew? It's got like the, the mint and everything here. She has a master's degree from Oxford and published four books, including two on sloths, leading to donations for conservation and crowds at lectures that mix biology with stand-up. You hate to hear it. You hate to hear it. We know it's coming, don't we? Mixing biology and stand-up, and it's a TED Talk. That's not a good combination of words. We humans are obsessed with speed. We idolize animals like the cheetah, capable of doing 0 to 60 in three seconds flat. Well, so what? <laughs> huh? I don't know, man. Maybe I just, I just don't get zoology humor. You know, it's a cut above. Valdez gave the first description of a sloth in his Encyclopedia of the New World. He said the sloth was the stupidest animal that can be found in the world. I have never seen such an ugly animal or one that is more useless. Listen, first of all, don't talk about me that way. Second of all, what is going on here? I mean, this is uncharitable, even for 15th century standards. It doesn't look like a sloth at all. What's with the tiny face and head? 
and the spindly legs. You having a bad day when you did this one or something? Are they cute or are they so ugly they're cute? Are they really good or is it just my brains playing a trick on me because it's so horrifying I have to make myself believe it's good? Is it a self-preservation thing that I'm doing? Oh no, they're cute, yeah. surely. No, yeah, they're just, re they're just regular cute. But then, I mean, I think a naked mole rat's cute, so you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, you're really not making this easy for me. You know, I'm trying to be in your corner here, but I mean, he's fine. He's, he's all right. He's, yeah, but why is he like that though, you know? You like a B-list animal. Yeah. What is, I'm not even joking, like the, uh, the vendetta from this lady. Why does she hate sloth so much? I'm, st I'm still just reeling from that. You, did you really say B-list animal is, are you okay? You been in journalism too long? Just look how one of those B-list animals can leave Lucy Cook starstruck. You guys have got to see this. <laughs> Cook noticed this. Cool. <laughs> what? What is it? What looks like fluffy golf balls. What fluffy golf balls? I need to know how you're getting golf ball from this. Like caterpillar, okay. A fruit if you're stretching, but golf balls. What does this look like from your perspective? Oh, someone playing a bit of 18 all up here? I see a couple six and fours. She realized was a cluster of something we'd never heard of. Come and have a look, Chan Chan. The elusive Caribbean white tent making bats. Okay, I wasn't expecting bats. Shh. I'm not gonna lie. I, like my heart rate's gone right up. I'm gonna start pouring in sweat and I might start crying. Now. I shouldn't have seen the bats. I shouldn't have seen the bats. That does kill me. That kills me. Oh, does somebody have the defibrillator? It's just a miracle of evolution. I mean, it's just why, like why? I think that's actually, that's your job. When you got that master's degree from Oxford, society kind of looks to you for this, the answer to why on that. That's about as exciting as it gets. <laughs> All right, come on, it's not that serious. You know, calm down. Your latest book is called Bitch. Ouch, but can I still get the book name? I really like you and your work, but yeah, my book's called Bitch. <laughs> Bitch, and I have it, I bought it. Let's see what we can learn from this manuscript. If you ever wondered what a monkey's O face looked like, now you know. There, that's what it says. There you go. You ever, you ever been curious? Is this on the up and up? We watched as a female was prepared for release before getting a lift to a promising tree. Off she goes. And if she falls asleep in the middle of the release, <laughs> <laughs> is that a bad thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that'd be a bad thing. She, what do you mean? No, yeah, she'll just keep climbing the tree till she gets to the top. She won't fall asleep because, yeah, what do you mean? So, after hearing enough of this baseless slander, I decided to come here to the source at Animal Adventures and ask these magnificent creatures how they really felt about it all themselves. And by the way, the Costa Rica was unnecessary. We're in Bolton, Massachusetts, so you could have saved on airfare. Let's go. Here we are, an audience with a two-toed sloth. Do you feel like a, a B-list animal? True. Okay, so we have a stunning rebuttal of the statements by 60 Minutes. You want more? You want to speak more? A lot more to say than I thought. Sorry, I think it was a pterodactyl or something back there. That's a macaque's O face. Yeah, here you go. What do you think? There's just tortoises uh, in coitus and a giant alligator staring on. A little bit exhibitionist in here. Do you think maybe you should be getting a room? I'll take that as a no. Honestly, I think we could just hang out. I think it might be fun. He's like undoubtedly a cool guy, like a really cool guy. I like you. I like you, Sid. Excuse me, do you want to speak on behalf of your slow brothers? All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. 